Hello and welcome to the StorageCraft Backup and Disaster Recovery Sales video. Uh, we're going to be covering a couple of things such as why you would typically need a backup and recovery solution, um, some of the issues that you may encounter and obviously uh, how our product effectively meets those typical requirements. Uh, first and foremost, obviously, why would one typically need a backup and recovery solution? Um, so here are a few of the common reasons for data loss uh, that are available from statistics in the US. Um, first and foremost, obviously, hardware failure and human error are by far the most likely reasons for data loss, uh, with 40 and 29% respectively. Uh, software corruption and theft are next in line with 13 and 9% respectively. And then the most uncommon, uh, surprisingly, is viruses and destruction through other causes. Now, obviously, with ransomware becoming a far more common problem and a very prevalent threat on the Internet, we do expect these numbers to change somewhat. But the two top causes being hardware failure and human error will most likely remain. And what are some of the common backup mistakes? Um, first and foremost, obviously not checking or verifying your backups. Uh, this is basically paramount to ensure that you can actually recover following a disaster because there's obviously nothing worse than trying to recover from corrupt or incomplete backups. Second, um, backup drives or destinations running out of space. Uh, this really is an easily avoidable issue which can lead to some uh, embarrassment on the part of the uh, managed service provider, for example, if that's something that they were responsible for. Third, uh, some of the competing solutions, particularly those that are file and folder based rather than uh, volume based, which is what StorageCraft is, uh, may be unable to back up files that are locked due to them being open in some type of running software. Uh, fourth, the exclusion of files or folders that uh, could potentially have vital information without proper care. Uh, obviously, you really need to make sure that the correct files are being uh, backed up. Um, fifth, the old adage of putting all your eggs in one basket. Um, obviously, there's many things like theft or fire or floods or lightning that can all destroy data and backups if they're stored in one place. So that's why something like replication is very important. Um, and then lastly, no proper backup schedules. Obviously, uh, accidents really happen on timely schedules, so you really need to plan for the worst and always be prepared. So why would you want to sell a disaster recovery solution? Um, basically for break or fix customers as well as customers you have provided professional services for, um, data protection services are obviously a natural expansion of your relationship um, with your customer um, and it can basically move you towards a model of recurring revenue and value. Because many customers are looking for alternatives to traditional backup solutions and a managed service provider uh, basically presents a fairly attractive alternative. Uh, you can obviously also uh, garner customer satisfaction and retention through providing uh, a fairly indispensable service uh, because you can obviously easily hire a new reseller in order to fix a potential problem. But moving their data to a new data protection service provider, unfortunately, is not. Uh, and what's more, obviously, if your customer finally gets a data protection service in place and it works well in terms of meeting their recovery point objective and their recovery time objective, uh, they tend to not want to leave you. Uh, next, of course, you can evolve your customer relationships. Um, basically, selling such a strategic service like data protection uh, allows you to completely change your relationship with your customer from being just another vendor selling hardware or software to basically for being his uh, virtual chief information officer, uh, making strategic recommendations and delivering critical business systems. And obviously when you develop a business continuity plan, you'll gain a deep and broad understanding of your customer's business. And this obviously means that further down the road, uh, you can obviously deliver even more value to them. Next, one of the beauties of any service uh, tied to data is that data typically grows at a minimum of about 20% year on year. So this means that your data protection service will grow uh, by that same 20% even if you don't add any new customers. And this is why it's important to create a business model that's able to capture that continuous data growth. Uh, next, if you've made an investment in any type of infrastructure, you can obviously leverage that investment by pointing your customer's data to your data center. 
Uh, and if you haven't made that investment and you don't want to, you can obviously point your customer data to your service provider and let them provide the hardware and the software and the operations staff while you obviously focus your energy on professional service engagements and sales. So how do we uh, do all of this? Our solution is obviously StorageCraft. So StorageCraft is a volume-based backup and recovery solution, um, and their entire product suite is effectively uh, focused on the recoverability rather than just backup. So just to highlight a couple of key features, uh, there's obviously encryption uh, that can be used as part of your backup schedules as well as part of the uh, replication, depending on where you may want to perform that encryption. Um, and in the latest releases, that encryption is available either in uh, AES, 128 or 256-bit. Um, it's also a cross-platform solution that supports uh, Windows clients as well as pretty much uh, any Linux distribution. There's also various replication options, uh, both to local destinations as well as services that you can host in the cloud. There's also the ability to boot VM straight from your backup images uh, in the form of a component that they call virtual boot. Uh, and effectively what it allows you to do is it serves two purposes. The first of which is obviously testing your backups really properly. Um, and that kind of comes back to one of the slides that I showed earlier um, in testing and verifying your backups on an ongoing basis. So what you can effectively do is you can take any backup image and you can start it up uh, in a VM uh, either in VirtualBox or in Hyper-V that obviously makes sure that you've got a, a proper test of your backup image because now you've made sure that your operating system is booting correctly, that your production application is functioning correctly, and that your production data is actually intact. The second purpose of Virtual Boot is effectively using it as a temporary failover um, because let's say there's a critical machine that has failed Obviously, some businesses or organizations may have a lengthy procurement or replacement process. So now you can basically use that VM as a temporary failover while you actually fix the actual machine. There's also the central management of your backups and policies through a component called Shadow Control. Um, and effectively, Shadow Control is also responsible for uh, potentially sending alerts to your customers or reports if you've got some type of service level agreement with them. Um, and obviously informing you of anything that needs to happen. You can basically manage all of your organizations and endpoints in one place. So you basically have one instance of shadow control that you deploy, and that can actually provide uh, all of the um, central management of backups and policies and alerts and reports uh, from one web console. There's also the ability to restore to dissimilar hardware in the form of uh, Head Start Restore. And Head Start Restore is basically a way of pre-staging your backup images to make it readily available following a disaster. Mm -hmm. So what you can effectively do from there is um, take your backup images and you can either consolidate them into some form of a physical volume or you can dump it into, say, a VMDK file for VMware or VHD for Hyper-V. And it basically means that you've got a machine effectively sitting on standby uh, ready to be used uh, to fail over your actual machine. So normally, when you need to recover a machine that has failed using a normal disaster recovery solution, you typically have to boot into some type of recovery environment and start the recovery process, be it mounting the backup images from a local or network location, and then it obviously can take a couple of hours for that task to complete. So through Head Start Restore, you're basically take, uh, cutting out that piece uh, of the restore process because you've got something that's basically ready to be used. All you need to do is effectively attach it as the intended storage for a particular machine, whether it be physical or virtual, um, and then start the machine up and you're effectively back up and going. There's also the ability to verify your backups. Um, so that's over and above the testing of your backups through something like Virtual Boot. Uh, every single backup image that's created through StorageCraft is also created alongside an MD5 hash file. So whether it be through manual verification or through the automated verification that happens through a component called Image Manager, you can al always ensure that you're constantly verifying your backup images at rest. Um, and obviously that doesn't make sure that the, the data inside those backup images are in fact intact. And that's why you use things like Virtual Boot to do proper testing of your backups and also potentially do things like mounting your backup images and doing basic file and folder restore tests 
in order to ensure that the data is complete and intact. Next, there's white labeling of the report functionality, which is obviously great for MSPs. So that again ties into the component called shadow control. So the reports that are sent out, um, you can basically um, add your logo and add your company name. So any of the reports that you either issue or generate manually and send to your customers or those reports that you basically uh, set up and send through on a scheduled basis, whether that be daily, weekly or monthly, um, those can effectively have your company name and logo in place. There's also an add-on called granular recovery for exchange. Um, so one of the things to note about uh, GRE is that it does require uh, some form of backup solution to already be in place, whether that be through Storagecraft Shadow Protect or through any of the other competing uh, backup and, rec and recovery solutions. It basically just means that you have to have a copy of your Exchange database file that you can mount through the granular recovery for Exchange component. Um, and that basically provides you with detailed um, and granular recovery of your uh, mails, for example. So whether that be a user that's accidentally gone and deleted something, or if there's a, a migration that you might want to do from an old exchange server to a new exchange server, you can literally just basically select individual mails or complete mailboxes um, and recover those efficiently. From a pricing perspective, it obviously fits medium to enterprise customers, but that doesn't mean that we've forgotten about the small businesses. There are a number of bundles available that say bundle a server license with a number of desktop licenses that make it a little bit more attractive from a cost perspective. Um, more importantly, though, there are monthly billing options available. Um, and really, from a MSP perspective, that uh, means that you can very easily uh, get into either selling disaster recovery as a service, uh, or actually um, basically providing that service to your customers easily because they don't have the massive capital expenditure that would typically be required uh, in terms of annual or perpetual licensing options. Next, it's uh, built per system, not per gig. Obviously, because it's a volume-based uh, backup and recovery solution, we don't really care how much data you're storing. Um, and then from a major competitor's perspective, um, most of the companies that we come up against are Symantec, Backup Exec, um, Acronis, uh, Veeam, and Unitrends. Uh, furthermore, from a sales perspective, it, you can also note uh, that there are things like cross-grade discounts available. So if you're moving away from any of our valid competitors, uh, we also offer you significant discounts. The next slide, I just basically want to highlight a typical customer layout. Uh, so what you can see here is, uh, let's say this is client A, uh, you've got maybe a couple of physical servers, each of those servers maybe run a couple of virtual machines, you've got a couple of workstations and a couple of laptops. The main deployment uh, configuration for Storagecraft is that you have some type of central storage in place, uh, whether that be through the form of a network attached storage device as indicated at the bottom left, or some type of SAN, um, it doesn't really matter, as long as it's some type of centralized storage location that you can manage your backup images from effectively. We also have a component in there uh, labeled the BDR device, and basically that can be anything. Uh, it can be a virtual machine, it can be a spare workstation, it can be a server. Um, the main purpose of that is that you have an instance of the image manager software running on a permanent basis uh, because image manager is responsible not only for the verification of your backup images using the MD5 hash file that I mentioned, uh, it's also responsible for the consolidation and retention of your backup images. So in terms of consolidation, obviously, uh, you, if you're running your, uh, say, a continuous incremental backup schedule that obviously takes incremental backups uh, at a predefined schedule, if you're doing that, say, once every 15 minutes, that basically means that you're sitting with over 40 incremental images for a single day. So it uh, obviously becomes far more efficient uh, to consolidate those images either into a consolidated daily image or a consolidated weekly or consolidated monthly image uh, because in that way, you can maybe have a user that comes to you saying that they've accidentally deleted a file, for example. Um, and most of the time, they might remember when they deleted it, uh, at least the day, but they're certainly not going to remember, uh, say, a specific um, 
period of minutes or hours on a particular day in the previous week, for example. So having a consolidated image means that you've got a very easy point in time that you can reference in order to go and uh, maybe mount the image in order to recover files and folders, for example. Um, Next, you'll notice that there's a little um, blue and gray icon with a shield in it um, on all of the servers, VMs, workstations, and laptops. That basically represents the Shadow Protect backup agent, which should be installed on every operating system that you wish to backup. Um, and obviously, everything's connected through some type of uh, central network configuration, whether that be through a router or a series of switches. It doesn't really matter. Obviously, this is just a very, very basic uh, example, um, which is signified through the router in the middle. Um, then, obviously, there's an internet connection that goes out. Um, and then you've got in the bottom right there, you've got an instance of shadow control. Um, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, shadow control is the central management system so that you can obviously manage all of the endpoints. And that's basically why it's situated somewhere on the Internet, because you as a managed service provider can deploy a single instance of shadow control. And then all of the agents sitting all over your clients organizations can basically uh, authenticate or register uh, or subscribe to that one shadow control instance. And you can manage all of them from one place. Um, so it is important to note that if you want to use shadow control, it does require an additional agent that is installed on every endpoint where you either have image manager or shadow protect installed as well. Then you've also got the MSP replication server options. Um, so it's important there to highlight that uh, you can uh, basically set up two different versions of replication servers. The first is shadow stream and the second is IFTP or intelligent FTP. They basically do exactly the same thing. Um, the real difference between them is that they are optimized for different types of internet connections. Obviously, IFTP, because it's got FTP in the name, it obviously uses file transfer protocol. Um, and as I'm sure you've encountered with very large uh, transfer, let's say it's a 100 gig file. If something goes horribly wrong at, say, 99 gigs or 99 percent, and then it generally means that the transfer has to start from the very beginning again. Um, and that's basically why the IFTP replication mechanism is generally only recommended uh, if you have a high bandwidth and low latency internet connection, something like a fiber connection or a microwave or point-to-point -point wireless link, where a shadow stream is basically the reverse. It's optimized for connections with high latency and low bandwidth because it takes a backup image and then uh, divides it into many smaller pieces and then uses multiple connections and streams uh, in order to replicate it to the uh, target destination. There are also a few cloud replication options available provided by StorageCraft themselves. However, these are not yet available in uh, our territories where we distribute StorageCraft, and that's why it's basically been excluded out of this presentation. We do hope that this may be released at some point in the future. Uh, they're busy deploying data centers all over Europe at the moment in order to provide that facility to European customers, um, but only once there are local data center options available will that become a feasible option um, for StorageCraft. So that was just a very short presentation in order to highlight some of the sales aspects of our backup and disaster recovery solution. Um, thank you for watching, and I hope that was informative.